the seen and unseen. We thank you for directing our steps. And today, Lord, we, we come to you with open hearts, our souls and mind, ready to receive the words of life, the bread of life that you have prepared for us this morning. Lord, we, we thank you so much for your everlasting love as um, so many were celebrating this day of love. And we thank you for your love that you loved us so much that you died upon the cross, rose, sent back your Holy Spirit to be with us. Lord, we thank you for your everlasting love. And this morning, as we go into your word to hear about prayer, make us ready vessels that we will pray and have an intimate relationship with you, Lord. We thank you so much for this uh, resource that you have given us. Bless everyone. And uh, Lord, I ask that you will please back me out, less of me, more of you, none of me, all of you, so your people can hear what thus saith the Lord. I ask this in your precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A wonderful word that will encourage all of us to pray. Our subject this morning is an essential resource, prayer. If you have your Bibles, your devices or whatever, read along with me our text, which is found in 1 John chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And our context is taken from Matthew, the seventh chapter, and we're going to read verse seven, which is a very familiar verse. And it says, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you an essential resource, prayer. Now, if you haven't been praying for a while, let's start to pray. And if you've been praying, keep on praying. Prayer has always been um, somewhat of an elusive subject to those who really don't have a relationship with God. However, I do hope those who know God and also those who are seeking God will gain this morning a clearer understanding of this amazing tool, which is prayer. As our text said, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So I guess the question can be asked is, what is prayer? What is prayer? Well, I feel that prayer is one of the most important conversations of your day before you speak to any of your friends, your children, your husband, your wife, whomever. It is one of the most important conversations that you have. Also, it is a prayer. Prayer is a tool that we use to communicate with God. It is the greatest essential resource that Christians all over the world have. Mother Teresa said, prayer is like putting oneself in the hands of God. And what better hands to place ourselves into? I feel that prayer is like breathing. It's something that we do continuously, constantly. For the word of God even tells us to pray without ceasing. Um, prayer is simply an ongoing two-way conversation with God. It's not a shopping list, asking him, telling him, and then leaving. It's a two-way conversation. And that's how we grow in our intimacy for our Lord. 
So I guess the next question we could ask is, why do we pray? Why do we pray? Well, we pray because we have desires. We have needs. We have concerns. We want to share the good, the bad, the ugly, our disappointments, our sadnesses, our hopes, our victories. We pray because we need comfort, which only God can give to the fullest, more than our family, our friends, or whatever. He gives comfort that only um, comes from him. We go to him, we pray because we need encouragement. We need guidance. We need strength from day to day. We need his mercy. We need grace and we need peace. And you know, this list can go on and on and on about prayer. When we pray to our father though, it helps us to come to such a, a better um, a knowledge, uh, understanding of God's purpose for our lives. So the reason that we pray is because we have confidence in God. We have faith to know and understand that when we pray, he hears us. As our context says, our text says, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. The definition of confidence is, is good to go over. It, it, it's a feeling or belief that uh, one can rely on someone or something. It is a firm trust. It isn't, it isn't shakable, it is unshakable. It is a firm trust. And that's the type of confidence that we have in God. So our text says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Now him, who is the author of this book talking about? He's referring to him as God, the creator, the all powerful savior, our almighty counselor, the all knowing one, the all wise, mighty God, the everlasting father, he's the prince of peace. He's our provider, our sustainer. He's our guide, our hope, our expectation. Again, this list could go on and on. And I do believe that during this time of um, this pandemic, we are using a lot of this names. Yes, we have this confidence in him who is able, praise the Lord, to keep us from falling. And he is the one that hears our faintest cries, our prayers. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. This portion of the verse, if we ask anything according to his will, is a portion that so many of God's people stumble at, the piece of according to his will. But this, uh, this morning, if, if you have confidence in Christ, Know and understand the promises of God in the word, knowing the word of God. We know that he has our best interest at heart. As it says in Jeremiah 29, he says, for I know the thoughts that I have of you. I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give to you an expected end. Praise the Lord. Now this morning we went through why and why we pray and what is prayer and so forth. I'm, I'm very visual and I wanted to make it clearer to all of us how our texts and our context would look like in 
our everyday life, in our practical life, what does it look like for someone with confidence in the Lord who prayed about something that they were so concerned about? Someone who had a health concern and prayed about it. Someone who waited in faith and trusted God for a very, very, very long time because they knew God would answer their prayer. And then someone who was praying and an answer to prayer was a Mother's Day miracle. So this morning we're going to have three examples of saints, people who had a concern and they're going to share with us how their confidence in God, their prayers were answered. And first we're going to go with our brother Stephen, someone who had a health concern, prayed about, and we will see the results of that. Brother Stephen. Praise the Lord, to God be the glory. Back in uh, February of last year, um, I was encouraged by my primary uh, doctor to go and to um, see a, a urologist because my PSA um, score would begin to climb. And this is after 20 years prior, I had had my prostate removed uh, because of cancer. And I, I went to the urologist and uh, I was told, yes, there, is a concern I initially sent on to an oncologist. And they said, well, let's take a let's take a PET scan and see where this cancer is in your body. And the result of the PET scan was that yes, there were spots on my seventh, my ninth uh, rib, and there was also a spot on my shoulder. With this information, my wife and I, thank God for her, we began to pray and just put this before the Lord, saying, Lord, have your way. Whatever the results is, um, you're a God that has never failed us. And we prayed and we sought out the prayer of the prayer warriors uh, that Sister Sarah leads, and uh, she asked them to join us in prayer. The results was that yes, it was not yet another cancer and there was multi-myeloma, which is a cancer of the marrow. So now there's prostate cancer and also um, uh, multi-myeloma that we were dealing with. But we continue to, sought to seek the Lord's face and God in mercy impressed upon me to go and take get a second opinion, which uh, I reached out to um, a Memorial Sloan Kettering and they scheduled me and looked at the information that was sent over from White Plains Hospital and they said, well, let, let's take another PET scan to take to see what things look like. But this time we're going to add uh, contrast. So to highlight these areas that um, they're saying, the, the areas that they're seeing um, these dark spots on my, on my ribs and my shoulder. Well, the pets, they, they did the PET scan. I, my darling wife and I, we sat with the oncologist to hear the results and next steps. He came in a little, looking a little perplexed. We didn't know what it was all about, but he sat down and he said, uh, I have an interesting report. He says, your PET scan came back that everything is normal. There is no multi-myeloma and you're cleared. We began to praise God, and I mentioned, I said, we believe in prayer. We believe in miracles. We believe in God. And we left there praising God, and today, after receiving treatment for the prostate cancer, God, in his mercy, has me once again cancer-free. Glory be to God. Amen. Praise Amen. The Lord. Praise, the praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Stephen for, pray, for um, sharing you. your confidence in God. And as a result, we have your story, your testimony today. Now we have something else. We, are, we have something else. We have another um, story testimony of someone who waited in faith and trust for a very, very long time. And we're going to have the daughter 
of one of the um, congregants to share that story. And Sister Esther will be sharing that story this morning. I want to begin my uh, testimony with a portion of St. Luke 18.1, which reads, men ought always to pray and not faint. When asked to share my mom's testimony, her pictures are on the screen, about how she prayed for dad for 40 years, wow. I am reminded of how powerful prayer is and how God answers prayer in a big way. Amen. I am a witness that prayer works. My dad grew up in a Christian home. His father was a Southern Baptist minister. When dad became older, he felt that serving God was not for him. So he left the church to experience the word. The last sermon that my dad heard his father preach before leaving church was, these dry bones shall live. Sometime later, he married mom and they had a family. Dad never attended church with us. Mom prayed for dad, even when there seemed to be no light at the end of the tunnel. Dad refused to go to church. He wanted nothing to do with God, prayer, or church. Mom continued to pray for him. She did not allow discouragement to set her back. She <laughs> believed in prayer. Instead of trying to handle matters alone, she turned the situation over to God. She felt in her heart and mind that if she continued to pray, God would answer. Mom prayed for dad 40 years, 10 years passed, 20 years, 30 years without any change. She never gave up. She mixed her prayer with faith. Mom continued to pray and God continued to work on dad's heart. Being the omniscient, all-knowing God he is, God was set in the stage for a miracle. Amen. After praying 40 years, dad came back to church. The first sermon dad heard when he came to Youth Mission of Life was the last sermon he listened to his father preach when he left many years ago. These dry bones shall live. Wow. God brought those words to life. As dad sat in service that Sunday morning, he received Christ as his personal savior and was filled with the Holy Spirit that day. I would like to end by saying, at 93 years old, mom is still fervent in prayer. Amen. Prayer is something that does not grow old. Prayer Amen. is powerful. Amen. Today, I want to encourage you, if you are praying for someone, a spouse, a child, a friend, a co-worker, don't give up. Mm -hmm. Keep on praying. Mix your prayer with faith. God may not come when you want, but our God will answer right on time. Oh, thank you, Sister Esther, for that um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful testimony of God answering prayer. And I, too, am a witness as I heard your mom and she, her picture her, is on the screen. Um, many, many times she would stand up with a prayer request, prayer request along with praising God that she knew that he would answer prayer. And oh my, my, 40 years later, I am a witness to your dad um, receiving the Lord. Thank you so much. Oh yes, we have this confidence we have this confidence. So we have one more. We have another wonderful story and testimony of a Mother's Day miracle. Sister Michelle Solom. Praise the Lord. When I pray, I think about the scripture from Jeremiah 33 that says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. So I learned to call unto God. I learned to pray. And he has shown me resolutions of impossible situations, of things that we know not. I believe that when I pray for myself and for others, that my savior feels my pain. He feels my need. He suffers along with us. And he loves us so much 
that we can trust him with our situations. And he'll answer us in his time according to his will. So for me, the key to prayer is trusting God. And I have seen miracles happen. I pray I have seen God move. My testimony um, of answered prayer today is just one of many, many accounts of how God has heard and answered. In 2018, a young man that plays a baseball on my grandson's baseball team had um, a very, very severe uh, accident with his ATV. Crashed into a wall. He had a traumatic brain injury and the doctors held out little hope of him living, let alone recovering from this traumatic brain injury. He was in a coma and that looked like it was going to be the end of it. The Lord laid on my heart in such an incredible way to pray. I, I honestly couldn't pick this boy out of, out of a, a lineup if I saw him. Um, but the Lord just laid on my heart, pray for this young man, pray for him. I was compelled to pray day and night for this teen. After about a week of continuous prayer, the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to go to the hospital. Now, once again, I didn't know the young man personally. I certainly couldn't go to the ICU, which is only for family members. I couldn't understand why the Lord was sending me to the hospital. I was praying without ceasing at home for this young man. But I learned that God doesn't speak to be heard. He speaks to be obeyed. So when the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to go to the hospital, it was a Friday afternoon. I asked my husband, it was his birthday that day. I said, John, I know it's your birthday. It's your special day, but please drive me to Westchester County Medical Center. He said, why are we going there? I said, I don't know. Uh, we're going there to pray. So he put me in the car. We went, go to the parking lot. So my husband said, are we, are you just going to sit here and pray? I said, no, no, I'm not praying in here. I'm getting out. I'm going in the building. Walk in the building. I had no idea what I was doing there. I walk in, I said, Lord, am I supposed to pray in the lobby? No. I said, all right, Lord, am I supposed to pray in the chapel? No. Well, where am I going, Lord? What am I, where, where am I praying here? All of a sudden, the Lord led me to the elevator. I get on the elevator, I go up, I get off at the ICU floor. I start walking over to the doors. I have no idea. I'm not even allowed to go in there. I have no idea what I'm doing at the doors. The Lord stops me. I lay my hand on the doors of the ICU and the Lord had me to pray right there. And I prayed. And after a time, I just, the Holy Spirit let me know that my prayer had been heard. I had been there. I had obeyed. I had gone. I had prayed. I turned around, got on the elevator, went down, went home, continued over the weekend to pray. On Sunday, saints of God, we heard that the young man came out of the coma. He woke up. He woke up to the doctor saying, there is no residual problem. There is no brain injury. There is no brain damage. The young man was completely perfect as he had been before the accident. I am a witness to the power of prayer. This was a Mother's Day miracle that happened for this family through prayer. God will use anyone. The effective, fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. So from that day to this, I have continued. The Lord had told me, your prayer for this room in the hospital does not stop. Every single day from 2018 to today, every night there is a room in Westchester County Medical Center. And I pray for the person in that room. As scripture tells us, God is a very present help in time of trouble. So I know in that room, there is much trouble. And I pray for whoever is in that bed. And I just wonder how many have been healed, how many have gotten peace. I also wonder how much of the staff 
has realized that in that room, there is healing and there is something of God. So I'm a witness to the validity of the power of prayer. And I hope you will be too. Pray without ceasing. God bless you and keep praying. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sister Michelle, for that powerful uh, story, testimony of what you witnessed in having confidence in God. And I thank all three of you for coming and sharing your story. Um, this is the confidence that we have in God. It allows us to trust God when the answer is yes, when the answer is no, when the answer is wait or not now. And our context encourages us. It says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. What is your ask? As we heard the three, one was asking for healing. Another was asking for someone to come to the Lord. Another one was asking for a miracle. This morning, I'm asking you, what is your ask? What do you need from your heavenly father? What are you in need of? Do you need hope? in these challenging times? Do you, you need love? You need strength? Do you need peace? And, and those are the things that we ask our Father for. And you know what you're asking for. How then do we actually look for it? And that's where the seeking comes in. As you heard all three of them, all three of, of, of our sisters and brother, it, it brings us to the word of God. And because we're going to have another part of this message, over the next seven days, I would like to challenge everyone under the sound of my voice to dive deeper, go deeper into what prayer looks like by having a conversation with the Lord. Ask him what you need. Seek his answer in prayer, but certainly in the word of God, because he wants us to do that. Jeremiah 29, 12 through 13. You could jot that verse down. It says, then you will call upon me, me meaning God, him, and you shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. I will listen unto you. And you shall search me, seek me with all your heart. And then there's Deuteronomy 4.29. Deuteronomy 4.29, it says, but from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you search for him with all of your heart and all of your soul. And it tells us in Proverbs 8.17, I love those who love me. And those who diligently seek me will find me. So the word encourages us not to be anxious. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to make your requests known unto God. And the peace that passes all of our understanding will keep our minds and our hearts through Christ Jesus. So if God spares our lives, we will be continuing on this wonderful subject of an essential resource, prayer. Remember 1 John 5, 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, 
that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And Matthew 7, 7, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. May God bless all of you and look forward to joining you in this challenge of this coming week. And if God spares our lives next week, we will continue on this subject of prayer, an essential resource, prayer. God bless all of you.